In this video, we're going to go through an example to determine whether or not a system, a particular system, is linear. And for this video, the example we'll use is a system where you have an input and you have an output, y of t, and the output is just equal to the input squared. Oops. Got so excited when I said squared, I was going to draw a square around it. Okay, so this is sometimes called a squarer, for obvious reasons. And uh, the question we would like to ask now is, is this system linear? In order to determine if it's linear, we have to uh, determine if it is homogeneous and if it is additive. So we'll start with homogeneity. The idea, if you'll recall from the definition, is to determine if a system is homogeneous. Uh, it will be homogeneous if Ax of t goes into the system and Ay of t comes out. So the question is that we have to ask is, when I put Ax of t into this system, does Ay of t come out? Well. Let's actually do that. So we put a x of t into this system. The thing that comes out is going to be a x of t squared, okay? Because this is a square. And um, I can write this as a squared x squared of t. Now, um, y of t, the output of the system, when x is the input, is x squared. So this much is y of t. But you'll notice that instead of having, whoops, instead of having an ay, which is what I need in order for it to be homogeneous, out here I have a squared. So um, this system is actually not homogeneous because, again, if I put Ax of t in, I don't get Ay of t out. I get A squared Y of t out, okay? So we can say then that this system is not homogeneous, okay? Now, if we're trying to determine if the system is linear, and that's our only objective, we could stop right now, because if it's not homogeneous, it can't be linear. But because, of course, we're interested in learning more than we are in knowing if this particular system is linear or not, let's check to see if the system's additive, uh, because, of course, that will be instructive. Okay, so first we'll tidy up a bit. Okay, so for a system to be additive, again, if I put x1 of t in, then I'm going to get some output y1 of t, which, because the system squares the input, is just going to be x1 of t squared. If I put x2 of t in, I'm going to get another output y2 of t, which is going to be x2 of t squared, okay? So now the question I have to ask is if I put x1 of t plus x2 of t, is this going to give me y1 of t plus y2 of t? Okay, so that's the, that's the burning question, is if the sum of the two guys going in uh, gives me y1 of t plus y2 of t. So let's just see what happens. If I take this and put it into the system, the output of the system is going to be x1 of t plus x2 of t, that whole quantity squared. And if I work this out, um, this is essentially uh, squaring a, a term with two terms, 
So you'll of course remember that this is x1 of t squared plus 2x1 of t times x2 of t plus x2 of t squared. Okay, so now we can start comparing what we have coming out of the system in response to uh, this guy going in. Uh, this term, x1 of t, looks exactly like what happens if I just put x1, or I'm sorry, the term x1 squared of t looks exactly like the term that I get when I put x1 of t in. Okay, so this guy here I can now say is y1 of t. Similarly, x2 of t squared is exactly what I get when I put x2 into the system. So this is y2 of t. But you'll notice, and this is the part that uh, we're actually trying to figure out, this term here, the product, 2 times the product of x1 and x2, this term does not um, show up either as y1 or y2. So the output of the system when I put x1 plus x2 in is going to be y1 plus y2 plus this term. Okay. So it turns out the answer to this question, if I put x1 and x2 in, do I get y1 plus y2 out? The answer to that is no. And so we can say then that this system is also not additive. Okay. So this system is neither homogeneous nor additive, and that means that it is not a linear system. Uh, it turns out that even though it's not a linear system, it can be quite useful in certain applications. Uh, for example, if you're demodulating or if you're uh, uh, modulating uh, signals in a radio, a square is one way to do that. So just to show um, what conceptually what we've shown mathematically here, let's uh, suppose that, let's tidy this whole thing up here. So let's suppose that we put a cosine like this into the system. So this is going to be x of t. And we look at the output of the system. The output of the system, if you take a cosine and square it, uh, the output of the system, or the, out, the cosine squared, basically looks like this. It's a cosine waveform that wiggles with twice the frequency of the original, and it never goes negative, okay, because it's squared. So, um, you can think then, uh, if I um, were to take the original uh, cosine waveform and say multiply it by a half, uh, so I get something that looks like this. Then when I square that, I'm going to get something that looks like this. It's actually going to go to a fourth and back down to zero and so on. And so you can see graphically that um, this guy, which is uh, the cosine with an amplitude of a half squared, is not one half the amplitude of the original cosine. Okay, so this is a graphical example, or graphical.
graphical interpretation, I guess, of the fact that uh, the, the system is not homogeneous. And I could come up with a graphical representation that it's not additive, but uh, I think in terms of uh, time, we'll let it stop there.